Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the Sound Blaster E5, and the folks from Creative who make this product sent it to the show to review. I've been using Sound Blasters now for almost 30 years, uh, and this is one of the latest ones that they came out with. Now this is a uh, external audio adapter for your Mac or PC. That's probably the simplest way to describe it. So what you do is you plug USB in on one side, uh, pop it into the USB on your computer, and audio comes out of either its headphone jacks or its line output. But it does a lot more than that. It's kind of like a Swiss Army knife, if you will, of audio. And it's actually a pretty complex little product in a good way because it does a lot of stuff. So we're going to be stepping through a lot of those things in the course of this review. And this one might run long as a result because it does have a lot of features that you might find interesting. So we're going to step through it. I do want to say before I begin that uh, configuration on the Mac is a little trickier than it is on the PC. Uh, so I'm making a second video that you'll be able to see linked below in the description as well as above in the uh, YouTube card thing up there uh, describing some of the pitfalls you might see on the Mac and how to get around them when you get it up and running. Now let's talk about the hardware real quick because we can kind of talk about the features as we step through all of this. Now this supports 192 kilohertz audio at 24 bits. So that means it's likely better than the sound hardware that is built into your PC at the moment. Uh, the problem though is that this is expensive. So this is about $200. And if you are a fan of my channel, you know how many of those $200 PCs we look at. This will cost more than your computer might, but uh, we're in a new era here where uh, high-end gear uh, costs a lot more perhaps than the low-end stuff does. But if you are not happy with the audio output that you might have on your computer at the moment, uh, this will give you much, much better quality. It's got a really uh, nice audio processor in here, so much so that when you connect a really nice pair of headphones up to it, like these Sennheiser headphones I've been using for a while, uh, you will notice a difference. You're not gonna hear all those little clicks that come on. You're not gonna hear some of the noise that you might hear sometimes with uh, some other audio hardware that's integrated into your existing computer. This is a separate audio device. Uh, really sounds very, very, very clean, and it's designed to work with high-end headphones, including some that ha have high impedance. And we'll talk about some of that as we step through the tour of the hardware. So let's start on the front here, and you'll see there are two headphone outputs along with a volume control, very convenient to use here, so that's a nice thing. Uh, so you can hook up two separate pairs of headphones at the same time. Now there are some microphones on this thing too. There's three of them, in fact, on the front except only two are active at any given time. So if you look on here, you see these little, uh, these three little holes here. And when it's in uh, its uh, horizontal orientation here, uh, these two mics are active. And then if you were to change it to the vertical, uh, the top two here will then become active. So this one over here kind of stays on all the time, uh, but this one will disable itself and this one will enable itself. And what I found when I was hand holding it uh, is that sometimes it gets confused as to exactly what position it's in. So even if you don't change the orientation fully, a little bit of a nudge uh, might be enough to shut one mic off and start another. And you'll hear some clicking when that happens. Uh, so here's an audio sample. Right now I have it in the vertical position. I'm going to switch to horizontal and we'll see if this makes any noises when I switch back and forth as it switches microphone. So as you can see that it just kind of disables the audio briefly and then re-enables it, but it can be an issue if you have it in your hand. They do give you a little stand you can put it on, uh, and there is a, a little hole here for screwing it into a mic stand or something. So if you wanted to kind of let it stay put, uh, you can do that. But the quality on the mics isn't spectacular. I've heard better uh, you know, mics on Zoom recorders and other things, so you may not want to use this as an audio input device, uh, both for the reasons that it might accidentally get tripped up when you move it around, uh, but also the quality isn't all that great out of the mics. But you do have more options for audio input on here. Uh, so you do have a line or optical in, uh, input right over here, so you can bring in audio that way. Uh, you also have a line and optical out for putting audio back out to a stereo system or some other uh, speaker system or something like that. So it is pretty flexible in that you have uh, that ability. They also give you the optical cable in the box. So if you have some optical components that you don't have a cable for, you will get it uh, when you buy the device here. Uh, the USB host adapter is interesting. We're going to do some testing with this later in the video because you can connect this up with an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device and, and basically bring audio into that device through here. So if you have a bunch of high-end stuff that you want to connect through this, you can. You'll get the benefit of its uh, high-end audio processor and be able to shoot that stuff over to like the iPad version of GarageBand or something like that. And there's actually some really cool flexibility with that as well. So we'll check that out in a minute. And in addition to being an input for your mobile device, this can also output audio from the device uh, back out to your headphones. So if you want to get the benefit of the higher quality audio hardware on here, uh, you can do that simply by plugging the USB cable into your phone, just like you would if you wanted to record something, and plug your headphones into this side and you'll be able to hear better quality audio from your mobile device. 
Uh, this USB port here is for connecting it to your computer. Uh, that will not only uh, provide audio back and forth from the device to your PC and back, uh, but it will also charge the battery that's in here. And the reason why it has a battery uh, is that it also has Bluetooth built in, so you could use this as a Bluetooth audio device. So if you have your iPhone or your Android phone, uh, you can pair it up with this. It, your phone will send audio to the device, which you can then listen to on your nice pair of headphones. So there's a nice way to get uh, the benefit of using higher quality headphones with this uh, with Bluetooth. It also supports the APTX format, which is a higher quality Bluetooth output format that you can use for this also. So it will support uh, some of the newer Bluetooth standards. On the side here, you've got a power button for switching it on. Uh, SBX is Creative's uh, digital audio uh, processing that it can do. So it can do some stuff with the audio. Sometimes it sounds good with certain songs, sometimes not. So you may want to tweak this a little bit and there are some control panel options which we'll explore uh, later in the video. Uh, the gain switch here is for headphones. So if you have some higher end headphones that have a high impedance, you know, if they sound really low when they're typically plugged into a PC or something, uh, you can switch this to high and that will increase the output uh, of the audio here. So it does have a pre-amplifier built in as well. So you'll get uh, the ability to use your really, really nice headphones with this device. And uh, it really, like I said, it really does sound very nice to, to listen to. So it's a really high-end audio device. You know, the jury is out right now as to whether or not this 192 kilohertz audio is better than 44 kilohertz audio. But uh, in my testing, just about everything I listened to sounded better with this than it did uh, with my mid to low end PCs that I was playing with it on. So it is a, a very high quality audio device. Now let's see how it works. So this is the control panel that you'll see when you have everything plugged in. We're running it on the Mac right now, but it will perform very similarly on Windows as well as the iOS and Android platforms too. So they have uh, all the configuration options covered across platform. Uh, SBX is that DSP that I spoke about earlier. That's that little button on the front. Uh, you can also enable it and disable it from here too. Uh, when you turn it on, it basically gives you some basic options for adjusting uh, you know, the virtual surround sound. It is only a stereo output device, but it tries to do some uh, surround effects through its digital hardware. Uh, the crystallizer tries to improve the clarity of the audio. I haven't found this setting to be all that useful. Uh, if you want to adjust the bass, you can do so right here. Basically, what this does is it kind of acts as like an equalizer that's a little bit simpler to use perhaps than uh, doing it the old-fashioned way but you also have that equalizer option down here too. Uh, Crystal Voice tries to enhance the audio coming in uh, but I think if you are plugging audio devices into here what you're going to be using to interface this with your recording hardware will probably do a better job of adjusting that audio hardware uh, but it does have some basic noise reduction and a few other things so if you're having a hard time dealing with you know hissing in the background or something else you might be able to get something better out of this but you really want to test it first before you go too crazy with it. Uh, scout mode is designed for gamers. It tries to enhance some of the distant sounds that you might encounter in your game. Uh, I, I, you know, I didn't really find much of a use for it but if you're someone who wants to maybe hear a little bit better as to maybe things happening out in the distance in Call of Duty or whatever, uh, this might give you a little bit of an advantage there. I'm not sure what but uh, it's there. I'm sure they tried to you know, kind of check every box for all the different markets they're trying to enter into with this thing so they wanted to give something to gamers. Uh, there's also some configuration here for uh, your speakers and you can do some little test tones here to kind of get a feel to make sure that your uh, headphones are working properly when you're doing that. Uh, there's also a few other modes here. You can just uh, pop it out in direct mode uh, right out to your headphones if you want to bypass all this uh, audio uh, you know, hardware inside the device and just get the straight pure sound out of it you can do so and you can also pop it out direct via optical too if you want to do that without any filtering. Uh, there is a mixer which is pretty cool so um, what you can do with this is kind of adjust the volume of all the audio sources coming in that includes the internal mics the line in uh, I think it all yeah the Bluetooth is on here too so you have a whole bunch of different ways to adjust what the playback is going to sound like including of course the audio on your speakers here uh, and what's nice about this is, is you're going to see in a minute on the recording side uh, they give you an option for something called what you hear so basically everything that comes into this device uh, you can record back out through its output which is nice and handy so if you have you know mic audio coming in maybe you have game audio coming in from your computer it will mix all of that internally with that control panel and then you can record it separately into audacity or something else so i thought that was kind of cool and we'll see that in action when we plug it into my ipad in a minute and then of course you've got a standard equalizer here so you have a bunch of uh, presets uh, you can leave it flat if you want or you can go and do rock acoustic whatever else you want to do and of course you can adjust it manually so a lot of neat options for 
for audio uh, adjustments on here, or you can just tell it to don't do anything and just output uh, the pure sounds. So you can kind of get a feel for exactly what uh, the producers of that audio intended for you to hear. So uh, all cool stuff. So now what I'm going to do is plug this into my iPad and just show you how uh, some of that uh, stuff works when it's all put together. So right now we've got the iPad uh, connected via its lightning cable to the USB on the back of the Sound Blaster. And if you go into GarageBand, which is what I'm using here, you'll see that uh, when everything is plugged in, you'll now see all of the available audio input sources that come out of the Sound Blaster. We talked a little bit earlier about what you hear because what this will do is output uh, whatever the mixer is hearing here. So I'm just going to enable the internal mic briefly. And what you're gonna see when I do that uh, is when I tap on the mic here, you'll see that VU meter kind of fluttering a little bit. And then of course I can go ahead and uh, start the uh, music here on the computer and begin recording some music too at the same time that I can also tap the mic. So that what you hear uh, is bringing in audio from the microphone on the front here as well as the computer that is playing uh, the music at the moment and kind of tie all that in together to the point where uh, the iPad can hear all of that and record all of it too, which I think is a pretty cool feature to have on there. Probably not the reason though why you might want to buy this. I think the reason this product exists is actually for audiophiles who are looking for the best possible audio clarity and sound out of their computer because again we are getting back into this era of appreciating high quality music once again so those cds that i bought way back in 1988 and 89 uh, actually sound better than the stuff that I might buy from the itunes or the amazon store in mp3 or aac format because they've compressed that audio so now that we have a lot of bandwidth and a lot of ability to store data on our uh, personal computers and networks that we're getting back into this lossless audio so even if you don't believe 192 kilohertz audio sounds all that great uh, 44 kilohertz audio definitely sounds better uncompressed versus the mp3 alternative and the best way to listen to it is something like this where you have a really crystal clear audio clarity and it will work really nicely it's hard to test that or at least to uh, convey that other than words on a youtube video because ultimately what you hear is what your speakers are currently or headphones and current audio hardware are capable of outputting but i can say uh, as someone who plays with this stuff a lot this sounds great it is very quiet it doesn't really have a lot of static or anything else working into it and you can really hear the difference especially when you have a nice pair of headphones connected and in fact when you do get a nice pair of headphones and pair it up with this all that music you're buying online in compressed form sounds like crap so uh, this will definitely get you into a whole new uh, way of uh, at least probably re-ripping all of your cds first and you might actually go out and buy some more music from some of these uh, high-end audio providers so that is the sound blaster e5 this has a lot of depth to it so if you have questions or things that i didn't really cover here in the review uh, please leave them in the comments below maybe we'll do a couple of follow-ups and some with some different scenarios and whatnot because this is uh, this does have a lot of features more than it probably needs but i think they were trying to accommodate uh, every possible market that's out there and also stay tuned for that mac configuration video this is lon seidman thanks for watching